Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 1677, okay? It says, the planetary gear system is using an automatic transmission for an automobile. By looking or releasing certain gears, it has the advantage of operating the car at different speeds. Consider the case where the ring gear R is held fixed, therefore omega R is equal to zero, and the sun gear S is rotating at omega S equal to five radians per second. Determine the angular velocity of each of the planet gears P and shaft A. Alright, so we're giving our planetary gear in here. This is our uh, planetary, our planet gear P, and this is our uh, sun gear S, okay? So what we're going to do, first of all, is write out my givens. We're giving that omega R is equal to zero radians per second. And omega s for the sun is equal to 5 radians per second. These are the two givens. And in order to solve this problem, well, what I would like first to do is kind of create a 2D free body diagram of the gears that we're interested on. So we're interested on this gear of the sun, like seeing sun gear and this planet uh, gear, okay? so. We're going to go ahead and do that so we have a free body diagram and I'm going to even match the colors so the sun gear is going to become this red circle over here so that's our sun gear and our planet gear will become this blue circle so we have something like this now the first thing I would like to say, well, this is our omega s. This one over here, I'm going to write it outside, is our omega p. And we are also given some dimensions. Well, this 80 millimeters, meaning that from the center all the way to my corner is going to be 80 millimeters, meaning the radius of the sun gear. Then I also have that the planet gear is 40 millimeters, so we got 40. So from here to here is 40 millimeters. And I'm going to say that from here to here is another 40 millimeters. Just so we, um, so we have reference to our um, ring gear R, okay? So this is our ring gear R. So that will be the distance from here all the way to here. Now, how are we gonna solve this problem? Well, we're in chapter 16 and we're going to utilize these two equations, which the first one is the velocity of a point, okay? And then the second one is the velocity of a point with respect to another point. So we're going to utilize these equations to first, well, if we want to know the angular velocity of the planet gear, and if we know the angular velocity of the sun gear, what we can say is we're going to find a point and the both of these two have in common and find the velocity. So the velocity of this point, we're going to call it the velocity of A, okay? So that will be our velocity of A. Now, the velocity of A, so if we follow our first equation, 16.9, the velocity of A will be equal to the angular velocity of A of s, I'm sorry, of the, our sun, cross product, the distance of this, uh, with respect to this uh, disk, right? So the distance will be from the center all the way to our point, which is 80 millimeters. So we have that the angular velocity, well, the angle of the velocity is 5 radians per second, multiplied by our radius, which is 80 millimeters, okay? So if we multiply these two guys together, this will give me a total of 400. So I'm going to put negative 400 millimeters per second, okay? And the reason for it to be negative is that it's going towards the left instead of going to the towards the right. Now, um, we know this velocity and we also know that these velocity at this point, I'm going to call it V, should be equal to zero. 
and you may ask us ask me like why do we know that this point the velocity at this point is equal to zero well since the angular velocity of our ring is equal to zero that means that the point in here that is in contact between our planet gear and our um and our ring r has to be equal to zero so do that this is equal to zero therefore what we can say is that the velocity of b is equal to the velocity of a plus the angular velocity of our planet gear cross product the arm of b with respect to a okay and well we have that the velocity of b is equal to zero the velocity of a is equal to negative 400 and the direction is in the i direction meaning in the x direction right so it's negative in the x direction plus the cross product between the angular velocity of p well we don't know it however we do know that the direction is the k direction and the reason that we know that is that well we are assuming an angular velocity going counterclockwise meaning that by the hand right hand rule right this will be the direction meaning going in the k direction then we have cross product the distance between b and a well the distance is from this is my point a this is my point b and therefore is this distance over here will be a total 80 millimeters and the direction is in the y direction meaning in the j direction okay so we are left up with our initial negative 400 in the i direction and we will have minus 80 omega p in the i direction as well okay so when we cross multiply this k direction angular velocity with our 80 j will give us a negative in the i direction okay so now um, this is equal to zero. So what we can do is solve for our angular velocity of p, and uh, we have that this will be equal to 400 divided by negative 80. And if we put that into our calculator, we will get equal to five radians per second. Now, what does this negative mean? Well, it means that instead of going counterclockwise, this is actually going clockwise direction and it makes sense if my sun gear is going this direction then my planet gear should be going in the opposite direction okay that's what these negative means and just by that we found out the first answer to our question All right so we wanted to find the gear the angular velocity of p the second question is the angular velocity of this shaft a okay so in order to do that, well, this shaft A that looks something like this is also connected to my planetary gear by these components, right? And we're going to call this point C that I'm interested on to be the center of our planet gear. So therefore, that's, that will be my point C, all right? And why am I interested in that? Well, if we find out the velocity of C, knowing the angular velocity of P, then we can then relate that the same point has to have a relationship with the angular velocity of our shaft, okay, by utilizing this equation. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say, hey, the velocity of C is going to be equal to the velocity of B, so I'm going to relate it with first with respect to the planet gear this one over here and then it's going to have plus the velocity of the planet gear p cross product the distance from c with respect to b okay so we know that the velocity of b is equal to zero so we have zero plus the angular velocity of p which we found out to be negative five and it's in the k direction as well cross product the distance between c and b well this is my point b and this one over here is my point c there is a distance of four and it should be from b to c it's negative 40 millimeters so negative 40 
in the j direction, okay? If we simplify this, we have that the velocity of c is going to be equal to negative uh, 5 times 4 will give me 200 in the i direction, okay? So this negative and this negative become positive. However, the cross product between k and j will give me negative as we saw before. Therefore, we have negative 200 in the i direction. Uh, this unit should be millimeters per second. Now, we know the velocity of this point C. Now, what we can do is take our equation 16.9, but related to our angular velocity of A, okay? So we have that the velocity of C, it's also equal to the angular velocity of A multiplied by the distance. Um, I'm going to call this distance one, okay? What is this distance one? Well, the distance one is from here to here, where if we look into our 2D drawing that I did, this distance, I'm gonna make it in gray, will be the distance from the center of the sun gear to my point C. And as we can see, will be the addition of these two distances, therefore 120 millimeters. So we have that the velocity of C, which we found to be negative 200, is equal to the angular velocity of A, which is what we're trying to find, multiplied by the distance, which is 120 millimeters. We can go ahead and simplify this. So the angular velocity of A is going to be equal to negative 200 divided by 120. And if we put this into our calculator, we will get that this is equal to negative 1.67 radians per second, okay? And this will be our second answer for this problem. Just recalling that this negative means that it's going clockwise rotation, and it makes sense, okay? So our shaft A will be rotating in this direction, okay? So I hope you guys liked the video. Please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.